In the previous video, we explained what one of the colligative properties was, the property of the vapor pressure lowering of solutions when we add a solute to a solvent. And so here we're going to do an example. Again, the idea is that when you have 100% solvent, there will be a certain amount of vapor pressure attributed to that solvent. And if it's exposed to the atmosphere, of course, there'll be a partial pressure in the atmosphere of the vapor pressure of that solvent. Now, if we add a solute to that, it tends to lower the, uh, part, the vapor pressure of the solution if the solute is what we call non-volatile. It's a non-volatile solute, meaning it doesn't add a lot of vapor pressure to the atmosphere or to the container that it's in if it's added to a solvent. So, in the problem here, they're asking, what is, and I think I need a question mark here, because I'm asking a question, what is the mole fraction of urea in a dilute aqueous solution of 25 degrees centigrade if the partial pressure of that solution is 23.14 millimeters of mercury? Because under normal circumstances, with water at 25 degrees centigrade, water being the solvent, the, the pressure, the vapor pressure of water would be 23.76 millimeters of mercury if there was no urea solute in that solvent. All right, so what we do here is we go to our basic equation that the pressure of the solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the pressure, the vapor pressure of the solvent by itself. So we're going to first figure out what the mole fraction of the solvent is, and from that, using this equation, we're going to figure out what the mole fraction of the solute is. So we can say that x1 is equal to p divided by the p1 of the, of the solvent, which is equal to, so the partial pressure with, of the solute uh, of the solution is 23.14 millimeters of mercury, and the vapor pressure of the solution, or not the solution, but the solvent, the water by itself, would be 23.76 millimeters of mercury. So that fraction will be the molar fraction, or the mole fraction of the solvent, the water. So we have 23.14 divided by 23.76, and we get 0 0.974, 0 0.974. That's the mole fraction relative to the whole thing of water or the solvent in the solution. So now we're trying to find x2. So we know that x2, based on this equation, is 1 minus x1. That would be 1 minus x1. So in this case, that's 1 minus. 0.974, which is equal to 0.026. That would be X2. That's the mole fraction of the urea. So what is the mole fraction of the urea? It's 0 0.026. What if we want to know how many moles of urea we would need to add to one kilogram of water? So let's do a second part B of that. So the number of moles of urea would be added to one kilogram of water. All right, well, let's find out how many moles one kilogram of water is. That's one liter, and uh, one kilogram, well, one liter in, of course, the right circumstances, but let's say we have one kilogram of water. How many moles is that? So the number of moles of H2O is equal to one kilogram divided by the molar mass of water. Now, water consists of hydrogen and two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom together is about 18.02 grams, which is 0 0.01802 kilograms. I know that the 0.02 is probably not necessary, but just for good measure. So we have 1 divided by 0 0.01802 equals, and I get 55.5 moles. 55.5 moles of water. So how many moles... Uh, at this ratio, does, does that represent of, uh, for urea? All right. If that's how many moles of water we have, and that many moles represent this mole fraction, then how much does this represent? So it's going to be a ratio of the two. So number of moles of urea is going to be the 55.5 moles times the ratio, whoop, there we go, times the ratio of how many what the fraction of urea is compared to the fraction of water. So that would be equal to 0 0.026 divided by 0 0.974. And that will give us the right number of moles for urea. So 55.5 
times 0 0.026 divided by 0 0.974 equals, that gives us 1.48 moles, 1.48 moles. And so that would be the number of moles of urea in our particular solution if we had one kilogram of water in our solution. Okay, and that's how we use the partial pressure of vapor and the way it's lowered by adding a solute in it using Raoul's law.